But now we're about to go down to London Bridge. In fact, we're going to the Menier Gallery, which is currently hosting an exhibition called Transitions, which looks at art from the Middle East. And I must admit, probably most of us don't put those two together very often. Well, we're about to have our preconceptions challenged, I'm very glad to say, by two people here in the studio. Because we're joined now by one of the artists involved, Esther Brack El Anskari. Welcome to the show. Thank and you. also to Sara for Foriame. Yeah. That was I did quite well there really. <laughs> uh, who's the founder of Reconnecting Arts? Welcome both of you to BBC London. Let me begin with you, um, Sara. Yeah. When I said we don't normally think of the Middle East and, and art, particularly contemporary art, mm -hmm. I guess, you sort of you nodded. Is there a, is there perceptions to change there, do you think? I definitely think there are a lot of perceptions to be changed just because I feel like when we did our open call for the exhibition, we had over 400 artists wow. apply for this exhibition. So I think we usually don't associate art and the Middle East, but if you delve into it more, there's so many artists who are creating really interesting, innovative and thought-provoking work. And are they artists living and working in the Middle East or are they part of a diaspora? I would say absolutely from everywhere. You know, we have some artists in our exhibition feature who are based in London, yeah. some who are based in the Arab world and some in, you know, America, in Europe, etc. So they are all scattered all around the world. And when we say art, do we what do we mean? Is this is this painting? Is it photography? Is it filmmaking? Is it sculpture? Is it it's everything. All yes. of those. But most of the time we're focusing on contemporary art as yeah. our platform. So we really delve into absolutely everything and especially work that is kind of merging old and new. So we have, you know, collage, we have um, film, we have uh, installation pieces, we have absolutely everything within this kind of... Uh, Forgive my ignorance. Yes. Aren't there... Not problems is not the right word at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find the correct vocabulary here. Aren't there prohibitions in terms of Islam and, and figurative artworks? And that it all depends on interpretation. Right. And I think part of our exhibition is just trying to show that these artists are not spokespersons for the entire region or the entire kind of Middle Eastern community because every single person has their own individual beliefs, their own individual ideas. So our exhibition is focusing on the idea of that these artists are representing themselves as individuals and humans, first of all. And then we can go into kind of the community. But um, yeah, some people do have, you know, preconceptions about this idea of you cannot create arts about, you know, figures and stuff like that. But I think now with the rise of social media and everyone's posting photographs all the time, it's just something... The lines are getting very blurred, <laughs> I guess. Yes. Really. Well, look, I think it's time to talk to an artist. And we're joined by one of the artists involved, Destabrak Alanskari. Welcome to the it's show. Alan Sari. Oh, OK. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Someone's putting it inserted a cue. No, um, no. Okay. Where are you based? So I'm based between London and Muscat, which is in Oman. Right. Uh, not many people know about Oman, actually, or the art scene in Oman. So it's actually really great to be representing at this show called Transition. One other thing that I wanted to mention about what you guys were talking about before in regards to uh, interpretation and understanding, the concept of this exhibition is Transition transition is about movement is about change and that is something that's key for a lot of emerging artists um, that might not have had the platform before to showcase thinking abilities creation whatever it is so um, yeah it's it's a mixed bag of goods this this exhibition and I'm really glad that uh, there's not just me from Oman there's another uh, two artists also representing Oman at this exhibition but I just have to say I'm actually Iraqi I'm right. born in Iran and okay. raised in London and now I'm based there's cosmopolitan for you exactly <laughs> so you know I'm a mixed bag of goods and that's something that um, not many people do really talk about because uh, I think in the Middle East we're so obsessed with this concept of pride and I'm from here and I'm from there but there's so many of us that are in this diaspora that belong to the world and to belong belong to so many cultures that it's amazing to have this platform actually to showcase what we're doing. I mean you move personally between these different places and you come from different places does that mean that your art is reflective of all of those? I think not I think, I know that I represent in my art um, a lot of silenced voices. Wherever I go, whatever I do, a lot of my work is based around socio-political works. Like um, the photos that I'm showcasing are called Omanis Underwater. And what I've done is I've represented Omanis underwater 
and representing the socio-political, silent socio-political issues that you can't speak about on land but underwater and have these issues spoken about through aesthetically beautiful works without showing any faces, without pointing at anybody but instead placing kind of the viewer in this position of actually what's going on here and what do these images mean? Is it inevitable that lots of the work has a socio-political content? Do you think? I think this is one another assumption that is always made on Middle Eastern artists that they have to be creating work that's political, that's always trying to you know be controversial. However, I think you know every artist is different. Some works are political, and some works are just literally exploring themselves as individuals, their emotions, their feelings, and that's it. So I think with our show, we wanted to celebrate all sides of the spectrum and all stories. So we have a Syrian artist who's obviously talking about the war in his own country but we have other artists who are just exploring their own artistic and geographical uh, space around them. And I can't help but notice, for example, that both of you are female. Yeah. And again, that's another assumption, isn't it, I think? Yeah, definitely. Uh, are there a lot of female artists in world? That is one thing, as a, who has this platform, Reconnecting Arts, is always, oh, are there any, like, women artists? And I'm like, seriously, with this exhibition, we found it hard to find male artists. Really? Applying. So that was another thing, where there's so many women artists who are creating really interesting work. And, yeah, there's a lot of women artists. Is it... Is there... An audience at home for this work? Oh, if home is Oman or where? Um, so I'm based between London and Oman. Actually, this series, uh, Oman is Underwater, for example, last year showed at the Royal Academy of the Arts Summer Show. It's sold there. It's in Oman? No, in London. Oh, in London, sorry. The Royal Academy of the Arts yeah, yeah, Summer yeah, yeah. Show. Right. So you have 12,000 applicants that apply for that. And in no, but what I mean, is there an audience in, in, in Oman? There is. Oh, but what my, my point was is that it's on an international basis. It does have a platform, but it means different things in different spaces. For a space like Oman, for example, this series is... A aesthetically pleasing so it's actually quite beautiful when you look at mm. it and that works well in a space that is silenced in a lot of in a lot of dialogue so you're allowed to enter a room that you're not meant to necessarily be talking about things with something beautiful and that opens up a door for dialogue that might be challenging so it's it's actually it's very versatile as a series but talking about the concept of politics and things I mean one of the other things for me that was uh, really great for this platform was that Sara was really um, keen and interested in showing also my performance work so there's um, so on the opening night I had a live projection painting which is a process where I paint a film to life live and that was um, a project called Tales of the Mother Tongue which it speaks about female warriors of Berber past that can't be found in any history books but are only found in mythological books for many reasons now for example this isn't political this is on a humanistic level about women constantly being erased through history people can talk about it on a political level but that is not about politics it's about simply two genders that need to be equal in this world kind of thing so um, as opposed to that, this exhibition is incredible because you have so many things showing. You've got animation. How many people associate animation with the Middle East or with young emerging artists from the Middle East? Not many. Um, you've got one in particular artist that's dealing with animation, but more manga style. This is not something that is spoken about uh, regarding the Middle East, um, nor is necessarily um, the fact that we've got this installation or, or Reconnecting Arts has this installation to do with smell you know, where an artist is introducing certain smells that remind her of her hometown in Syria, but she invites you as the viewer to smell these smells and write down your own memories or your own interpretations of them. So not many people associate these things, and it would be great to have more of a... Do you think the audience is going to be drawn from both the, the, the Middle East and diaspora, yeah. but also from people who know nothing about them. Yes, I definitely believe that. Actually, um, myself and Khalid, who's also the founder of Reconnecting Arts, we are also from Qatar. Right. So in Qatar, there's such a big um, art scene that are happening, and actually Qatar Museum supported this exhibition, right. which is a really great move for them, just because obviously not all the artists are Qatari however they have decided to support this exhibition and believe in this exhibition themselves so in Qatar the art scene is definitely growing and um, are I there think any places that aren't represented that, that you would like to have been but that you couldn't get um, anything? I think we've kind of we've covered most places actually yeah I think we've definitely covered most places in our exhibition and I think that was the key thing where we could celebrate all stories from all walks of life 
And for people who don't know the Menier Gallery, and I'm among them, tell us where you are and how you get there and how yeah. long you can see it and all of that. So the exhibition is on until the 2nd of September, and it's Monday to Saturday, 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. We'll all be there at the gallery every day. Wow. And it's just next to London Bridge Station, so it's around a minute's walk away. So, yeah, it's very close. And it's free. And it's free, definitely. Thank you both very, very much. Thank you very Thank much. You.